In today's video, I talk with Jules. She left her six-figure salary and now lives on an island in Thailand for around $1,500 US dollars per month. She'll tell us her story of making her way barefoot to Bangkok. We'll talk about the cost of living on the island. She'll give us a tour of her house and show us her healthy island lifestyle. I just knew that if I were to serve and help others that the universe would serve me back and it did. After a few years of living in Los Angeles, California, I had the courage to embark upon my biggest dream ever and that's to travel the world and spread light and love. Reinvention. How many of you have considered throwing caution to the wind and starting with a new plan for life? During COVID, Reinvention became more than just a dream for people who saw their jobs change in dramatic ways. Long before the first case of COVID emerged, I met a woman who gave up one very successful career to become a whole new person. I was living the American dream. I had the fancy title, 15th floor corner office, CBS radio, six figure income, owned my own apartment, had a lot of friends. I worked hard, I played hard. I even did my yoga hard. And all of this was causing a lot of stress though at the same time. To make the income, to get the good job, to buy the apartment, was bringing a lot of stress into my life. And I realized that this life wasn't the life that I necessarily wanted. You know, I was living it, I was in it, but it wasn't me. Around this time, my father was losing his life. Unfortunately, he was suffering from a very debilitating disease known as ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Throughout the next few years, he was slowly dying. And I realized at that point, what am I doing with my life here on this earth? My father is gonna be gone at 55 years old and he didn't have the time to live out his dreams. It was then that I realized that I had to leave. It's time for me to live out my dream. So I chose then to pack up my bags and move to Los Angeles, California, chilled out and decompressed in the sunny streets of Los Angeles for a while. Had a very beautiful life there, opened up a Reiki Chakra Balance studio, worked as a yoga teacher, really got into my journey, really got into my self-exploration. And for those four to five years in Los Angeles, I really was able to uncover what my dream was. And I realized it was my dream to help inspire others, help inspire others to live their dream, to live a healthy lifestyle, to eat properly, to meditate, to take care of themselves from the inside out. Jules had already made one move from New York to Los Angeles. Now she would downsize even more. I learned that I wanted to travel from where I was to who I was. So I hopped on a plane and came to Khao Phangan, Thailand. She had vacationed in Thailand and met some people she calls angel travelers. They gave her the inspiration to reinvent herself in this tropical paradise. But as I sat in this beautiful little quiet beachside town speaking to these travelers. They were living here. Some of them were dive masters. Some of them were digital nomads. But I spent the next week or two just talking with them as they showed me all around the island. This island is full of waterfalls and magical little hideaway beaches or might not be listed on any maps. And they took me to the inside and out in the little nooks and crannies of this magical island. And for me, I had already lived that corporate life, was already paring down out of that life. And she knew this would be a good place to advance her love of yoga and meditation. I chose to leave Los Angeles and move to a more relaxing style of life in Thailand. But Jules didn't launch into her dream the conventional way. And I said, if I do this, I'm gonna do it full on, barefoot to Bangkok. And it would be a testament to me to give away all of those possessions, to give away all the materialistic aspects of the Western world that I was living in and that was no longer resonating with me. So I spent the next three months just paring down my belongings. I sold everything. I even sold a pair of $750 Louis Vuitton shoes for $88. <laughs> just the fact that I even owned a pair of $750 shoes makes me laugh today because I don't almost ever put on a pair of shoes now. <laughs> so the journey began, yeah, that's when it all began. And I was full on, barefoot to Bangkok. My friend picked me up at my little 
Marina Del Rey Venice Beach apartment and I had no shoes on. I had a backpack and a front pack. That's all I owned at that point. Started walking through the city streets of Los Angeles barefoot. Came into LAX barefoot. Made it out to Tokyo all through the airport there barefoot. By the time I got into Bangkok it was a little bit more tricky to go barefoot but I was going full on and made it out to the, the vibrant street of Kosan Road. When it comes to footwear, not much has changed. But most days now, I'm still living barefoot in Koh Phangan and on my spiritual journey two years later, living the dream. Entering into my humble abode, my Zen bungalow, as I like to call it. Welcome inside. We never wear shoes inside. And here is my favorite spot. I spend most of my time here, outdoor, on my terrace. I've got my view. Set up my lovely curtains. And some flowers. I've got a hammock, an essential here in Thailand and I have my mosquito netting because there's a lot of mosquitoes in Thailand and very shanty uh, space out here um, with a beach view so the ocean right here it's lovely to watch through the trees every afternoon every morning especially in the evenings when the Sun goes down magical sunsets absolutely incredible I have a little um, Reiki grid set up here with a piece of wood that I actually found on the beach and made a table out of. So let's come inside and take a look at what a bungalow looks like in Thailand and island life. When I moved here first, there was nothing. I had a bed, period, end of story, that was it. Typical of Thai rentals, especially on a budget level, they come with nothing. So I decorated it up with many of my souvenirs that I bought in Nepal, made up some curtains, had to buy my own wardrobe. I have my altar over here, which I do my morning prayers, with my Tibetan singing bowls. So here on the island, we have nightly drum circles. So I have three jambes and a little, um, that little coconut one is a dundun actually. So every, every night at sunset at Zen Beach, uh, we're all playing our drums and it's a lot of fun. Um, my little table, which I can do my writing in or eat, but I gotta be honest with you, most of my eating is done at some of the fabulous restaurants that we have here in Copangan. But when I do wanna sit down and act a little bit more civilized, this is my table. <laughs> Same room as my bed. And then we enter into, don't blink, the kitchen. <laughs> Small kitchen. I've got my gas burner, which is typically how most of us cook here. A um, little gas stove. I've lived here for three years. I don't think I've ever filled up the gas tank, so don't do too much cooking. Most of what I do is um, I make smoothies with my nanotech, high-tech smoothie maker, similar to a Vitamix. I make my coffee, Greek coffee. And that's pretty much of how I use my kitchen. So the bathroom has um, hot water, but the hot water is only for the shower. The sink um, has no hot water, and nor, nor does the kitchen sink. Yep. This place also comes with Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi here in Kopangan is really good, which makes it a nice place for digital nomads to come here and do their work. There's a lot of shade. I have the beach breeze, because there is no AC in this house, um, which I wouldn't use anyway. I'm not a big fan of AC, but um, it never really gets too hot in here. Um, I have a fan set up for when I get too hot, but I actually don't even use that every day. It's pretty nice, pretty comfortable in this bungalow. The biggest difference might be the cost of living. So a monthly rent for a bungalow like mine here on the island right now is between 12 and 15,000 baht a month. High season can get pretty booked out. Sometimes you can see the rents doubling, going up to two times as much as what they were on the low season. So eating on the island, if you eat Local Thai food, you can eat for as little as 90 to 150 baht per meal, and it's very delicious, very tasty Thai food. 
If you like more of the vegan, trendy places or um, looking for something a little bit more Western, that can run you about 350 to about 450 baht per meal. Transportation on the island is mostly by motorbike. I'd say 90% uh, motorbike. You can find a good deal for a monthly motorbike rental for around 3,000 baht per month, sometimes up to around 4,500 baht per month, depending on where you go and the condition of the motorbike. There are these big taxi trucks that drive around and can pick you up on the side of the road. And there's more cars now coming to the island now that we have more families coming to the island. I have an expat health insurance. It's a major medical insurance. That price is around 1,800 US dollars a year, and it will cover anything as long as I am staying overnight in the hospital. So in my case where I had a motorbike accident and I was in the hospital for one week, everything was covered. The Thailand also has its challenges. Sometimes you don't get flushing water. Sometimes it's cold water showers. Yes, there are a lot of bugs, mosquitoes, snakes, geckos, spiders. That's all part of living in nature. So if you're okay with living in harmony with all of this nature and letting go a little bit of those modern comforts that you've grown used to in the Western world, you're gonna thrive in this kind of environment. But if you're somebody that needs to always have air conditioning, always needs to have those modern conveniences, maybe living in a little tiny island like this doesn't suit you. I always think it's best to come here, check it out first, spend a few weeks, spend a month, see how you soak into the environment, and if it resonates with you, then maybe you choose to come here a little bit longer. And don't make a move to the islands in Thailand unless you appreciate a slower, more natural existence. We have some of the modern aspects of Western life, but without too much. So I think there might be three or four that I can remember of traffic lights here in Koh Phangan. Most of us get around with motorbike or bicycle and walking. Very few cars here. Very mountainous, lush palm trees. We have beautiful beaches, although the water is very, very warm. Got to be okay with that. There is a monsoon season. We just came off of about a month and a half of heavy, heavy rain. But even that you get used to. It doesn't make you stay inside. It's just like a snowstorm back home. You get in your car and you drive. I learned how to ride my motorbike in the monsoon, but it's all part of the experience. It's all part of living in nature in unison with nature and the universal rhythm and harmony with nature. So a typical day here in Koh Phangan is to wake up in the morning sunshine, meditate, go take a morning yoga class or teach a morning yoga class. The food here is incredible. We have a lot of vegan options, vegetarian options, a little bit different from other places in Asia. It's a huge spiritual community that lives here, so a lot of amazing, healthy food choices. There's a local beach, Zen Beach. Many of us gather at sunset where the musicians will come by and play bongos and we chant the mantras and sing along to the spiritual tunes. There are many local establishments where you can go for sunset. Another one of my favorite sunset spots, they have a beautiful little natural sandbank in the middle of the water. So when the tide is right and the sun comes down, everybody walks up into the ocean, into the sandbank, just gently relaxing under the sunset. What I really love about Thailand and much of Southeast Asia is the community feeling here. You can go out to a restaurant by yourself and you're never alone. You can sit down and join somebody at their table and wind up talking to them for hours. I've made so many friends here. It's really just a beautiful place where people are looking to connect. People gathering and sharing their experiences and sharing their love. After over seven years of living on the island, I'm now in the process of purchasing my own plot of land 
and coming together with some like-minded folks to build a conscious community and really looking forward to getting together as a community of like-minded individuals. For more information about Jules, check out her link in the video description. She offers transformational meditation, guidance, and counseling. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to check out my cost of living guides and living abroad lifestyle profiles. For more information, please visit www.livingoverseas.tv.